What's going on guys? All right, so today I'm gonna wrap the roof on this Lexus RC300. So this roof is a little bit different in a couple of ways. Now, there's something new that it does have a shark fin antenna, which I've already removed. In order to remove a shark fin antenna, you're gonna have to drop your headliner down a fair bit. That is a whole different process in itself. You can work around a shark fin antenna, but I don't recommend it. If you're able to take it off, uh, definitely take it off. It's much nicer finish in the end because uh, as you work around the shark fin antenna it tends to not look as nice around the shark fin antenna itself anyways this is going to be the easiest roof wrap as far as not having any drip sill trims in this area here on top of that this roof protrudes outwards all right so this this actually this sunroof it when it, when you open it it comes up and out and you're going to see what that's like most sunroofs they drop down and in this one comes up and out which is a kind of a a pain to deal with it's not that bad uh, if you know what the right techniques and tricks to go about doing this. So today we're using uh, Avery Dennison Gloss Black. It's my, probably my favorite film as far as films go. It's a great brand, very easy to install. It min definitely minimizes my roof wrap times uh, to like the bare minimum. So, you know, I'm not spending an hour or two hours wrapping a roof. You know, we're spending 20, 30 minutes for the most part. Now, what we wanna do here is we wanna have a couple of things ready. We need a tape, measuring tape ready. I have a soft one here. And all this stuff, guys, you can buy uh, in the links in the description below. I'll put everything there. Also, if you're looking for disassembly uh, videos, I have a new channel up. I'll put a link up in the top there uh, for, uh, it's called CK Wraps Disassembly or something like that, but it'll be up there. So if you're interested in learning how to take apart cars, that's gonna be there for you as well. So again, all these tools are gonna be in the description below as well as the vinyl. Now we're gonna need some magnets. These are important. These are your extra hands, all right? So these are great to have. They don't have to be anything particular, just something that's fairly soft, preferably rubber coated so that you don't scratch the paint. We're gonna need some painter's tape or masking tape. Painter's tape is good. You wanna get a, a decent quality, something that's not gonna leave adhesive behind. So spending like six, seven dollars a roll is pretty common. Uh, on top of that, uh, we're gonna use some Vivid Shield Guard. That's another important uh, piece to have. So this is gonna really minimize swirl marks and scratches on the gloss black vinyl. We all know what gloss black paint is like if you ever had a gloss black car. The vinyl is very similar to that. So it does tend to get a lot of swirl marks and very fine scratches. Those can be uh, minimized and reduced to almost a, nothing at all by using a fresh buffer on your squeegee, which is a monkey strip, again, in the description below, and then the shield guard in combination. Also, as well as making, this, making sure the surface of the actual gloss black vinyl wrap is dust free. So that because any dust will drag along the surface and that will cause deeper scratches, which is actually a big problem then. So we wanna make sure that our vinyl is very dust free. So what we're gonna do here first, we also need knifeless tape. And I don't actually have knifeless tape here today. What I'm gonna be using is uh, wrap cut. So this is like a, this is a not so great brand of knifeless tape. It's not knifeless tape. It is a cutting tape though. Uh, I don't have any knifeless tape here today, unfortunately. But what we have to do here is I'm gonna break this down for you right now. What we wanna do here is we wanna lay the knifeless tape in to this recess right here, overlapping the actual vinyl by about one eighth of an inch. Now, if you're just doing a roof wrap and, you have, and you're not wrapping the rest of the car, you're leaving the rest of the car, let's say gray, as your, that's the original color, you're gonna pretty much lay this as straight as you can in this area right here. I'm not sure what that is. That's fine. Uh, I just heard an alarm go off. So we're gonna lay the, the, tape, or the, the, the cutting tape in this recess the, as straight as possible. Most cars will have a recess like this. Some old classic cars, they don't. So what you have to do, I mean, even on like a Rolls Royce, they don't, like newer Rolls Royces, they don't have a nice recess here. So you have to actually just kind of find a body line or make your own body line. That is all up to you. And that's your judgment call on that. So let's get started here. So what I'm gonna do is we want to leave about four or five inches of the tape on either end, okay? Very important. That's going to ensure that we have enough to pull when we finally get down, uh, get down to, to actually breaking the filament out of the knifeless tape or of the, of the tape itself, all right? So we don't want to stretch. We don't want to, we don't want to pull too hard. We just want to keep it taut and I'm not sure what that is. I don't know if anyone hears that beeping, but there's a beeping in the background. Uh, we want to keep this as taut as possible, but not stretching, not to the point of stretching, all right? And again, we're leaving about an eighth of an inch. So this is a, 
very weird style of cutting tape because the string actually, the cutting string actually sits on one side. Where's that coming from? It might be the next door neighbor's shop. It's fine. No. So this has a string only on one side while knifeless tape, the filament runs straight down the middle of the actual tape itself. So again, look how much I've left here. Very important, okay? What you can do is you can actually fold one end up so that you're able to grab it later on. I just kind of crinkle it up a little bit. That's just my style, it's what I do, no big deal. Uh, so we're gonna do that same thing to the opposite side. Also what we're gonna do is we're gonna mask off our window and we don't wanna mask off the trim completely. We just wanna mask off the window so that we can have, we can cut on this glass without scratching it first of all. Second of all, this will help the vinyl to slide off. All right, it's gonna help the vinyl slide off and we'll be able to tuck a little bit more in, which is nice. Another area we want to mask off is this area right here. And we're going to mask it off right around, all the way around. We want to get it very close to the rubber edge. Now the tape will not stick to this all that great, but we're going to make it stick. Here we go. Huh? It's not the AC. No. The beeping? No. I don't even think they can probably hear the beeping in the background. I'm not sure. If you can hear the beeping in the background, I apologize. It's probably not that loud though. It sounds like a microwave going off. It's coming from over there? Oh, that's weird. Anyways. <laughs> We're gonna go all the way around this window, all right? So we do wanna make this kind of precise and exact. Also, another product that I forgot to mention that we're going to need is isopropyl alcohol and a couple of microfiber cloths, or at least one microfiber cloth. Let's go all the way around here. The isopropyl alcohol should be 70%, non-diluted. If you're gonna use like 90% or 99% isopropyl alcohol, what you're going to want to do is dilute that a little bit about about 30 percent I don't recommend anything less than 70 because 70 tends to strip any wax and grease very well 90 90 obviously does it better but it's a little bit abrasive so we want to kind of find that fine line between what's abrasive and what works well right so what's abrasive and what's not too abrasive and I find that 70 I've been using it for like seven years 70 percent isopropyl alcohol is the best way to go again there's other products out there like you know there's 3M surface prep and Avery and all that kind of stuff I mean it's to me it's a bit gimmicky you don't need it just a cheap three dollar bottle of isopropyl alcohol will do all right so we're going to meet these pieces right here and that's it so now I'm going to continue off right here so it's all in the prep right having a prep surface is very important a thoroughly prep surface is very important then I'm going to mask off the back here I know a lot of guys don't use tape. I use it everywhere. I use it as much as I can use it. This, for me, it speeds up the process. There's way less risk involved when it comes to trimming. Uh, you know, so taking care of, the, obviously, the customer's car is like the number one priority. Uh, but a lot of guys will not use tape. And then there's some guys who use it as much as I do or even more. So cheers to you guys who do use it a lot. It's, I think it's uh, fantastic technique and a, and a form of uh, installation. All right, perfect. So that's looking good right now. We're gonna lay our cutting tape on the other side. Now you might notice that I overlapped the tape on the other side, or maybe I didn't overlap it. You can overlap the cutting tape with the actual with the, with the painter's tape. It's not that big of a deal. It will cut through it. So again, I'm going to start about four or five inches in, give myself that extra, and then line this up nice and straight. All right, giving ourselves about an eighth of an inch. Here we go. We want to make sure that this tape is sitting flat. 
no air bubbles behind it. And then we're ready to rock. So there's gonna be one last step. The next step is to prep the surface, which I've already actually done. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to raise the sunroof, wipe all inside, so all on the edge, as far as you can go, you can move it back and forth a little bit because it will stop whenever you want it to. So you can move it a little bit forward, you can move it a little bit backwards. That'll give you access to all the edges. I've already wiped that, so what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to wipe the exterior because I can see you know got a little bit of a uh, little bit of dust there, stuff like that. So let's grab my isopropyl alcohol and the rag, and we're going to mist the roof. Make sure you're wiping off the surrounding areas as well. So what you want to do is you want to wipe off the pillar, you want to wipe off the window, because any debris that's sitting around will be drawn in by the static that's created when you remove the backing paper. Remember, if you're doing this alone, we're going to be removing the backing paper while it's on the surface of the vehicle. So that's going to draw in, that's going to create static on top of the surface of the vehicle. So that will draw in particles. Again, we're going to wipe the back window. Again, I've already done this, but we're doing it again to show you. Now, this is a roof. I can already see imperfections in the paint itself. It's not going to be flawless, pretty much on any car. You know, you go through a little hailstorm or anything like that, and there's a very good chance that there's going to be very, very minor imperfections, which might show through slightly. Okay, so all the stages of prep have been done. What we need to do now is we need to cut out or measure the, the area of this roof. Typically, roofs are a little bit longer than 60 inches, so we have to usually run it more than 60 inches this way, and they're only about maybe four feet wide or about 48 inches wide. So I know that this roof 100% is not wider than 60 inches. It could be longer than 60 inches. So all I'm gonna do is, and it can't be wider and longer than 60 inches, otherwise, your vinyl is not going to be enough to cover the entire area. Vinyl does not come larger than 60 inches, unfortunately. So if that's the case, you may have to use a seam or stretch the vinyl. So this is actually 60 inches, which is pretty good. So I have about 60, it's about 58 inches end to end, because I'm about an inch over on that side and about an inch over on this side, that side. I could run this very efficiently right across but I'm actually just going to cut it at 62 inches. I'm not going to be cheap and uh, give myself a little bit of extra film to play around with. So this is a point where your magnets are going to come in very handy. We're going to slap a couple down. We're going to measure it out, so I'm at 62 right there, and the backing paper has markings. Now not all of Avery's films have marked backing paper, all right? Some of their older stuff that's been sitting around for a little bit longer doesn't have the markings on it yet. This roll does. It doesn't mean that you didn't get Avery, it just means that you might have gotten an older roll. Not a big deal usually. I haven't had a bad roll of Avery very often, it's very, very rare, so I would, not something to worry about too much. So I'm just going to pull a little corner back, this is how I do it, pull a little corner back and then just stick that guy down, that will kind of hold the roll closed. Now if you're doing a lot of roof wraps, I highly recommend investing in a, in a full roll, which is 25 yards or 75 feet, that will get you a heck of a lot of roofs. It will get you like a, around a dozen roofs or so. Alright, so next things next is we're going to flop this right over top, all right? So you want to gently do that. You could roll it up and then unroll it again on the top if you find that that might be a little bit more difficult for you. And obviously being tall for doing this is kind of an advantage. Uh, if your roof is very high up, it could be a little bit more challenging depending on how tall you are. So you, maybe you want like a little step stool or something just to kind of assist you. Yeah, and that'll be a, more of a personal thing, so. 
What I'm going to do is I'm going to use my magnets again on all the corners. I'm going to trim off the excess over here. So I, what I've done is I've lined it up over there where I have enough coverage. And then I'm going to trim, find the edge here, and trim off my excess. So the cutter that I just used, uh, this, is, this cutter is actually only available from Yellow Tools. I will put a link in the description for the Snitty, which is another tool I have. I'll actually show you it. You know what it is? The light turned off. Why? Oh, I don't know. Oh, here. Maybe that's why it's beeping. One of the plugs unplugged, so maybe that's why it was beeping. All right. So this is the other cutter. Plastic. It will not, it most likely will not, it will not damage your paint pretty much. This one, on the other hand, can damage your paint. This is metal with, it's Teflon coated, all right? So this can. We want to keep this elevated when we're using it. Uh, I do prefer this one, actually, but again, this one does work well. So I'm going to keep it elevated. And we can use this piece afterwards for like the shark fin antenna. The shark fin's already wrapped, but we can use this piece for the shark fin antenna or like chrome trim deletes because this car has a chrome trim delete. I've already done that. So we can use that piece. We'll throw it in the car for now and use it later. Again, I'll just plop, plop that right there. So I'm going to move back over to the other side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start removing the backing paper. So you want to come over here. Just going to make sure everything is going here as far as the recording goes. Good. All right. So if you want to come over here, I'll show you how to remove the backing paper. So when we're removing the backing paper, this is, the, this is sometimes people are a bit challenged by this. What we want to do is just peel the sticker side off of the backing paper itself. This is easier than trying to roll the backing paper off of the sticker. The backing paper is much stiffer, so we can actually put our hand underneath it and just fold it like that. Much easier, okay? So what we're going to do now is we have to be very careful here. What we don't want to do is create any jagged lines in the film itself. This usually happens if we kind of crease it and roll the backing paper at the same time. So I don't need to use a magnet anymore. I'm just going to stick that down by hand. All right, so I want to lift, see this? I want to lift this up and make it more flat. And I want to keep this from wrinkling right here. This is very important because if we get a jagged line in during this process, we're going to have to go in there and heat it out with a heat gun. And if it's, in the, if it's in the middle of the car, that can be challenging to reach. Even for me, who's a bit taller, I'm 6'2", that can be challenging to reach in the middle of the, hood, uh, middle of the roof. So we try to make sure that we do this part really nicely and as evenly as possible. I'm going to have to remove the magnet on the other side now. So you might notice if you've ever done this before that you get kind of like a zipper mark in your vinyl. That's because it kind of, it peaked either here, here, or here, somewhere along the way, and it caused it to create this zipper, this jagged zipper mark. So again, we just take our time. And that's more likely to happen as we get to the end. So I'm going to take extra time right when I get to the end. Now we're off. All right. So that, by, by taking the backing paper off, by removing the backing paper, that creates a ton of static. That will dissipate. But at that moment, it's, crea it's creating a lot of static. So it is drawing in anything in the area that might be loose. So I'll take this. I'll fold it up. And we'll just pop that over there. All right. So let's talk about glassing. What's going to happen right now is we're, we want to we want to glass this film out. By glassing this film out, I mean let's make it smooth. We can't squeegee this in this state right here. This is not a good state to squeegee the vinyl in. So when we glass out the film, what we're doing is we're going to lift okay, about one quarter or so, and you can see how that I've lifted that up and I'm pulling on it now. It's actually creating glass. And I come down slowly, give the vinyl some time to stretch, but don't stretch it too much. So if we find that when we put it down, look, that we're getting wrinkles here and here, what we want to do is put our hand a little bit more over here, and maybe our hand a little bit more over here, and then we can pull out and keep those wrinkles away, right? So those are not a big deal. Because these ones right here, we just have to pull down a little bit. 
right? So I'll be doing the same thing on the other side. Let's go over here now. Same deal. If I have wrinkles right here, I'm going to pull out a little bit. Let's put that down a little bit and then move my hands. Put my hand over top to, to disperse the tension a little bit better. And then that part's good. So same with here. These little wrinkles right there, we're just going to pull it slightly. I'm going to have to go in here and release the tension anyways when I go to squeegee it into the little recess. Not a big deal. So again, watch what's going to happen here. We're going to lift it. Let's get it up a little bit. There we go. So that will smooth out if I just give it some time. Put a little tension on it. Again, you can see that I'm spreading out my arms. I'm pulling outwards. You're going to want to do this with any film that you do use for a roof. If you're doing the roof to match, so like if I was doing the roof in the midnight sun to match the rest of the car, it wouldn't be as easy to glass out. I love Avery because it's very easy to glass out. It's very, very thin. That being said, the fact that it's very thin, it has its disadvantages. Okay, so we're going to pull this way again. And as you see, when we pull on each corner, we glass out the whole film. Uh, sorry, as I was saying, the disadvantages to Avery is because it's very thin, it doesn't hold up very well to the elements as far as like stone chips, uh, scratches, like you know, more aggressive scratches and things like that. This vinyl on the car, the Midnight Sun, is like three or four, I think it's four times as thick as the Avery. So it's gonna hold up a lot better to the actual uh, elements and what's going on around it. But again, as far as ease of installation goes, this is the easiest and it looks nice. It's a, nice, it's a very nice black. So I have this shield guard here. What I'm going to do is mist down the roof, okay? We want to work fairly quick because we don't want any dust to settle on the roof. So watch as I do this. What I'm going to do is start in the middle, okay? And see my squeegee is somewhat on an angle. Very important. So I'm going to keep my squeegee on an angle and I'm going to move this in very straight passes because I don't want to create swirl marks all over the place. We're going to try and make this as straight as possible. So if there are any swirl marks in the end, they're streamlined. They're not, it's not a mess, it's not messy looking. And anyways, if we do have swirl marks, they, they heat out with the sun. So anything that's very light will heat out with the sun. So now that I'm over here, I'm going to follow through. Same thing, we'll start a bit over in the middle. One side at a time, right? I usually move much faster. I'm just giving you guys some time to watch. All right, so as we come up to the recess here, what I need to do is I need to squeegee the vinyl into this recess here. I cannot stretch the vinyl into this recess because it will want to pop out. So what we need to do is lift the vinyl off of the car itself and lay the vinyl into the recess. Very, very important. So if you have a car like this, if you don't have a car with a roof like this, then you're just gonna basically overlap the, the drip sill where the drip sill trim would go and kind of cut in the middle and everything should fold down really nicely. Uh, it'll, get, it'll alleviate all the tension there so that everything folds in really nicely. Here we go. Almost done this side. So like I said, you want to lay into this recess the best that you can because if you're not, you run a very high risk of the vinyl popping out and that's not going to be good for you. So make sure it's all bubble free, air free. Use our finger to go over that edge. We're going to use my finger to go over this edge right here. Just get it nice and tight. And I'll show you how we're going to handle that in a second. Let's go to the other side and finish this other side off. How much time we had on the video? 24 minutes. It'll have to reset at 30 minutes. So again.
You can never really have too much shield guard. Soap and water will do too if you don't want to do it. I just find soap and water dries out a little bit faster. And this actually creates a wicked barrier as far as uh, water repellent or uh, yeah, water repelling goes and dirt repelling goes. It actually makes the vinyl super slick afterwards and it, the water beads like crazy when it rains. So this is actually a great spray to use as far as like an aftercare product. I've been using it for years. I use it on all my chrome installs. Um, like I said, soap and water will do the job, just not as well. So this is this is a polymer solution. It actually it, it actually softens the vinyl a little bit, making it more pliable, more, more soft. So if your vinyl is old, or if your roof wrap is old, it's going to soften up your roof wrap quite a bit, and and prevent it from cracking over time. Because vinyl, vinyl is plastic. Eventually, all plastic will dry out under the sun. It's an oil-based product. All right. So again, we're just trying to lay in the recess. It can be hard to see sometimes, so be thorough. All right. We're always double and triple checking our work, especially before we cut. So when you cut. That's the last straw right there. If we make a mistake cutting or we didn't wrap over enough of an area, then we're doing it all over again. Luckily for us, the, knife, the, the cutting tape that we're using, it does the cutting for us and it stays straight as long as it hasn't moved. Perfect. So that feels nice and tight. That feels good. We'll go around this edge here now. And we're basically ready for cutting, guys. So I'm gonna finish this off right here. And then go right there. Perfect. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave myself about, and this is freehand. You can let, you can put knifeless tape on here if you want to. I'm actually gonna snap a blade off right now. You can use knifeless tape around, around that seal. It's really not that necessary. If you put masking tape around it first, my knife's stuck, here we go. But if you're gonna freehand it, you're gonna, be, well, you're gonna wanna have a steady hand so that you can make this a nice clean line. So I put my finger on the edge where I know the actual paint is, and then I find a place for my blade. So make sure you're always feeling where that edge is and you're keeping your finger where that edge is. This will give us enough to tuck in and around. So it's gonna be difficult on this side because the edge is on the opposite way because I'm right-handed and I need to cut with my right hand. I'm not gonna cut with my left hand. I can squeeze you with my left hand but not cut with my left hand. Now I'm back on the edge again. And I'm gonna have these two areas meet. Perfect. We'll go around the other side in a second. What I'm gonna do while I'm over here now is I'm gonna cut some of this away so I can expose my cutting tape. We're gonna expose the cutting tape and in this case, the wrap cut uh, we have to pull the string out of the tape first. Unlike knifeless tape, this works a bit differently. You can't actually uh, snap the, the string from the tape itself. So, right. can't, good. We can't snap the string from the tape itself. Sorry, we just have to restart the camera there because the video is longer than 30 minutes. Um, so we have to actually pull the string out from the tape and then we're gonna give it a quick pull, get through the vinyl, and we're gonna bring it all the way down, all right? I'll bring it down on a 45, all right? Boom, check that out. So, after that, we're going to remove what's left over. Cool, so I've removed what's left over. We're gonna push down 
the vinyl again and make sure that it's nice and tight. Because after I've, after I've pulled out the tape from underneath the vinyl, it's going, to, uh, it's going to have lifted the vinyl up slightly, right? So I'm going to come back around here now and we're going to finish up this side. So I need to find my line and where I was cutting. So it's right there. I'm going to continue on. You can see I don't have a lot of blade out right now. It's a little bit safer that way. Again, when using a knife, it's always the risk of doing damage, right? So this is why I use a very sharp blade. All right, continue it here now. Using my finger as a guide on the edge of the seal. There we go. And I'm gonna meet somewhere over here. So we don't have to tuck in like an inch. It's not that necessary, okay? Now, I'm just gonna remove this. Cool. Now we've got our sunroof cut out. How are we gonna tuck that in there? I'm gonna show you how we're gonna tuck that in there, but we're gonna finish off what's going on on the outside here first, and then I'm gonna show you how we tuck that in there. So again, I'm gonna expose my cutting tape and then you want to bring the camera over here so everyone can see how I did it last time. And this particular tape, I'm just going to pull the string out simply because it, this is how it has to work. It's a little bit tedious, actually, that you have to do it this way. The string is not, the, the tape itself is not very pliable, so it doesn't actually break the way it's supposed to when you pull the string, not like knifeless tape does. All right, so when we get to here, what I'm going to do is pinch, put my finger over top, of the actual vinyl, okay? And where the string meets the vinyl. And what we want to do is pull on a 45 and give it a quick pull, okay? That just cut through the vinyl right now. You can see the string's in there. So now, let's go down that in there. We're going to pull on this 45. Perfect. Let's remove the tape itself. You can see right here that it's underneath the vinyl and that it's lifting the vinyl up, right? So we have to push that vinyl back down afterwards. Just keep that in mind. So I'm just going to stick that there. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to do that right away so I don't forget to do this. And that's done. Now, I'm going to go back over here and I've masked this off, right? So I'm going to Gently glide my blade across the top, scoring the film. That's going to cut through it. And I'm going to do the front as well, exactly the same thing. We'll come around to the other side. I'm going to be continuing on from where I was cutting. Now, while in here, I'm just going to cut this out. This is our shark fin antenna spot. Right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to lift the vinyl up and I'm going to tuck it in up to the edge of the seal or push it right up to the edge of the seal that's underneath here. But I'm not gonna I'm not gonna trim it at the S seal's edge, okay? Because I want to tuck some in. I don't want to just trim it right off at the edge. So I'm using my squeegee to apply pressure so that I know where that seal's edge is. Perfect. I'm gonna finish off cutting the front section here. We'll be done in about five or ten minutes. Okay, so again, I've done the same thing. I've cut some of the vinyl back to expose the tape 
The vinyl doesn't stick to the tape as much. It does a bit still, but it doesn't stick as much as it normally would if it was the glass. So again, what I'm going to do here, I'm going to find the edge. So I can look to see actually how kind of how far down I got to go. I don't have to go down very far, maybe like a millimeter and a half, two millimeters. So the seal is actually right there. So that, that defines that line for me right now. I know if I cut slightly below that, when I went squeegee the vinyl below it accidentally. You don't want to squeegee the vinyl below it onto the rubber seal. You only want to squeegee up to the rubber seal. If we squeegee the vinyl onto the rubber seal, it makes it a bit more difficult to, to take the vinyl off when we're going to tuck it in. So it'll actually stick to the rubber seal pretty good. And that's going to cause a bit of a problem when it comes to using our next tool after this to lift the vinyl off and tuck it in. So we have two more cuts to do, one more in the front, one more in the back. As soon as I define this edge, I'm going to be ready to cut. All right, so what I'm going to do now also is just kind of wipe off some of this so I can see better. Makes way more sense. All right, and now I'm going to cut on the opposite side of the seal. Very gently, there's a gap there because we could cut through the seal if we push too hard. And we don't want to do that. So bring that back to there. Let's go to the other side. Again, I'm going to wipe it out a little bit so I can see. And same deal, there's going to be a spot right in here, a little sweet spot. So this gives me about an eighth of an inch to tuck in, and a lot of windows are like this. And I know that I've covered all the panes completely, which is important. Otherwise, why are we wrapping the roof? Cool. So now, I'm going to get rid of that. What I'm going to do is I have this handy little triangle tool, another little tool that I'll put in the description below, all right? This is pretty much the best thing that you can have for doing a roof, all right? So I can actually, what I want to do is I want to find an edge here. So I'm going to find an edge, lift up that seal, okay? It's usually they're pretty soft. Some are harder than on other cars, and some don't even really have them, like Mercedes and stuff. Some of them don't even have them. So we want to lift it up, and we're going to use one squeegee to tuck in as we go along. So what I usually do if it's this soft is I kind of follow in behind with my other squeegee and I can kind of bang it all out all at once. Now I know that I've done this roof already before so I know that it gets tighter as we get into the middle. So sometimes we slip out a little bit. Just keep in mind we don't want to push too hard. We don't want to damage the trim and we don't want to cut through the vinyl either. So I'll take my time and as I I'll go like three, four inches at a time, or two inches, and then pull the vine, pull this back, which will create a gap. It won't damage anything unless you pull on it really hard. We're not trying to kill it, remember? We're just trying to be gentle here. This is all about finesse. Tuck that in, I'll keep going along to the other side. So I should be able to run the triangle down and squeeze at the same time. Just depends on how soft the seal is, right? So you can see that we have some flex here, right? So you can see right here, we can, we can gently glide the squeegee, the triangle down, and then tuck in the vinyl. Now, like I said, if you have, if you, if you push too far down with the vinyl before you do the cut that we just did before we tuck it in, if that makes sense to you, then what's going to happen is the vinyl is going to get stuck to the rubber trim and it's going to be hard to lift it off using the triangle as we're doing right now without damaging the vinyl. So that becomes a challenge on itself. All right, so then we get down to here and give it a little bit of finesse, roll it around the corner a little bit. I'm just going to lift the tape so I can see. 
Again, it's black, so it's going to be a little bit difficult to see for you guys. Tuck in some of that gold while I was there, too. I didn't tuck that in yet. There we go. Cool. So the back section is all done. And as we can see, we're not leaving any adhesive behind from the tape. I'll go back there afterwards and remove it. Same deal for the front, guys. I haven't actually found the edge here yet. This one might be a little bit easier to see. Again, it's a little bit hard to see because of the gloss black, but I'm just squeezing down to the top of where the seal meets the paint. No, no further down than that. I'm gonna fold this down. This one I can see. I'm gonna find the gap on the opposite side and trim, giving myself about an eighth of an inch. to the other side. And now, again, same deal. We're gonna find, find that rubber seal I've honestly been using this triangle for like the entire seven years to do this. Now, if my squeegee is a little bit too wide, which this one is, you're gonna want a tool that has a bit more finesse. When I have this wrap stick flex, and that's gonna help me tuck the vinyl in. So this one is very tight in the front, all right? But again, it's always, in my opinion, much better to tuck the vinyl in than not tuck the vinyl in. Just take our time. This is not a rush job. So we have to find a sweet spot. Sometimes the triangle gets stuck and I don't want to push too hard, so we have to lift it a little bit and then find a sweet spot. It should glide pretty easily. I'm gonna go ahead and tuck all this in. You can put uh, masking tape or painter's tape around the actual squeegee itself, or the triangle. I find that it doesn't help that much and it just creates thickness to the, to the actual triangle. The vinyl itself doesn't really stick to the triangle, I don't find, it's just finding the right angle to get the squeegee to run through the trim is, is, the, is the most difficult part. So like I said, if we add a little bit of masking tape to the squeegee, that's gonna make it thicker and it's gonna make it maybe a little bit more difficult. So I'm just trying to find that spot again without digging it in. You can see how I'm just taking my time, right? About halfway through. Oh, came out again, no big deal. Go back in. It only takes like two minutes, even when we're taking our time. It's not a long, not a long time. Okay, so I'm gonna have to come over there because I can't really reach anymore. This is actually my easier side when I'm doing it like this right now, pulling it towards me. Pushing away is kind of awkward. So again, you can see how I'm just pushing down. I'm not actually gliding my wrap stick along it because I could get a wrinkle because it's so tight. So I don't want to get a wrinkle. I want to make sure that I'm not getting a wrinkle on the edge. It's happened to me before. And sometimes you can save it and sometimes you can't. Sometimes you gotta redo it, so. It's like I said, it's all about finding that sweet spot where, this, where the triangle glides. Too stiff. So 
long as you're being gentle enough, this won't cause any damage, all right? Sometimes on older cars, the trim can be very dried and cracked simply because of the sun's been drying it out and it's rubber, rubber dries out. So yes, it can be an issue on some older cars. We won't typically do a lot of older cars. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing anything older than six or seven years. But again, if it's your own car, that's totally cool. Practice on your own car. All right, we're nearing the end. So you can see how a tool like this is super handy. If it was me back in the day, a credit card might do the job uh, before I had a tool like this. I only got this tool maybe not even a year ago. So we should be good. Cool, that looks great. So next thing's next. We're gonna open the sunroof. This is the last bit. Let's open the car. Let's pop that sunroof. So the sunroof, because I've masked it, will hopefully, let's go slow. We're gonna go slow here. I'm gonna control it, okay? okay? So if I find that it's sticking a little bit too much, I might have to go around it. So right now I'm gonna go around it with the squeegee and just get it off the tape a bit. So normally it would slide off, but we're gonna, we're gonna do this manually. Again, once we, once we lift it off the tape, it won't stick down again anymore because I'm not adding pressure. If it's just resting on the tape, it won't stick at all. It's mainly the corners that are holding it down. We'll get the other side too. So sometimes we have stuff like this, it's a bit of a delay, no big deal. Like I said, you want to do it right and you want to do it right the first time. It's not worth putting in all this effort to mess this up right now and not be patient. So you might be asking, Depending on the tape, does the vinyl stick more or less? I don't find that any particular tape does any better of a job. And that's it, so it's coming up right now, right? You see? So what I wanna do is open it all the way. Right, so I'm gonna stop it right there because I need to get my hand into different spots. So we're gonna start Squeezing it around. So we don't need to really add heat at this point. This is pretty, pretty straightforward, easy stuff. We can just use our hand. And of course, we want our cut to be straight, as straight as possible. It's not the end of the world if it isn't. You can see even right here that it's not perfectly straight with me. I'm going a little bit thin over on that edge, a little bit thicker over here. Again, it's not the end of the world. It's mostly straight. So knifeless tape might have helped to keep it more straight. But again, knifeless tape is not always doesn't always stick to rubber trim and stuff like that. So if we were to apply the knifeless tape to this edge, it may not have stuck very well. So if we have any excess film, what we want to do is we want to roll it around and underneath a little bit. That's going to help with longevity purposes. So now let's open her, open her a little bit more. All right, wait. So this will give me access to here now, which I couldn't reach before. I'll go back to the other side. I'll peel off all the tape and that's it. So right here. Perfect. 
So I'm just gonna remove the tape while we're here. See how easily the tape comes off the rubber seal? So for, even for the, uh, the knifeless tape to sit on the rubber seal, it's, it's, it's tough. It doesn't usually stick that well. That's why I mask it off and do a freehand. I'm gonna clean it up and you guys are gonna see exactly what this looks like. Clean. Get this last bit out of here. Alright, now I'm just going to use, let's turn off the car, I'll use some shield guard again, apply a little bit more and clean up the surface. Try to wipe in one direction for the most part, but you're going to see right now that there are literally zero scratches. Okay. So have a look. You tell me how many scratches you can see in there. I don't even see one. Not even one. Not even swirl marks. That's that's the bonus part. Is that. You don't have to get this car, sit outside, and post heat it in the sun for all the swirl marks to go away. No, this is like fresh, like it's brand new. It looks a mint. Other than it's, it's got a couple of small imperfections, no big deal, right? But we all know that. This is a daily driven car, and, and things like that are common, right? Even on a Lamborghini, if you've driven your Lamborghini like five times, I'm going to tell you that your roof's not perfect. Doesn't matter. I've already proven that with the uh, Rolls Royce video and the front fender, how it had imperfections in it. So, Got a little bit of adhesive there from the tape. I'll have to clean that off after. It's no big deal. But yes. Otherwise, that is a mint roof wrap. So all your hard work paid off, I hope. Uh, hopefully this video, guys, was informative. Uh, it is a bit more extensive to wrap a roof like this than a, than a roof where the sunroof drops down and in and one that doesn't need the knifeless tape for the drip sill trims here. Uh, they would have definitely sped things up about 15 minutes or 20 minutes or so, even, even maybe more. Uh, so it would have made things a bit easier. Sunroofs typically are not a big deal. This is the only one that becomes more of an issue. Uh, again, I hope the video was informative to you guys. Uh, if you enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. And if you guys want to see more videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Again, a link to all the products and tools that I've used are in the description below. And that's it. Thank you for watching. And don't forget to thank my wife for the video. Take care.